right. Hello, everyone. Another tea time today. Um, let me just open up my YouTube so I can see your comments. Um, my channel. That's weird. Um, so today I have a special treat on my plate that I'm happy to share. It's, why is it doing that to me? My channel. It's really weird. It's asking me to create a channel. I'm like, I'm already, oh my gosh. What in the world is going on? Am I signed out or something? Alex a historian. Your channel. There we go. It's really weird. All right, so who's here? We got um, Jedi Mars here, Crittenden, Anchor. Hello, everybody. Um, Mr. Olives is here. Hello, Mr. Olives. Hello, Luke. Disney fan 2005 says, I only subscribed because the chat was subscribers only mode. I mean, that's kind of the point is if you're already watching the channel, you might as well be subscribed. But, but the other reason why I do that too is because there's a lot of people who are not part of the channel who are just there to troll. And so it's a, it's a way I prevent people from trolling. This is on. So, oh, Chris is here. Hi, Chris. Um, all right. So these are preheated already. I'm just bringing the water back up to a boil so that I can put the tea in. And then I'll show you the little surprise I have today. I'm gonna need like a paper towel or something. All right. Here we are. Today it is Irish breakfast tea. Cool. In a moment, that's going to switch to 405. Yep, there we go. All right, um, so then that, yeah, 410. Uh, let me get a paper towel real quick. Of course, the first ones have to... Okay. Alright, so I have a special treat on one of my plates here today. No sandwiches today, so I know I normally do um, t a type of English tea sandwich, but today I need something different. So let's see if any of anybody watching knows what these are. They're oddly shaped, I know. So we'll see if anybody knows what those are. This is the other side of the plate. I made these today. Actually, it's funny. Just before setting up the tea, I had just finished making them too. So um, we'll see if anybody gets it. And then if, if nobody gets it, I'll tell them what it is. Let's see. <laughs> Goji Gamer says, are those bagels? No, they're not bagels. And they're not bagels. Um, all right. Uh, Tyler says, while I'm here, Alex, I have two questions for you, and it will be separate. 
Do you did you know that Britannic was supposed to be grander and more luxurious than Olympic and Titanic? Yes, actually, that one I did know. Um, because after you know, that's usually how it happens too. Is is if there's a if there's sister ships, then usually the newest sister ship will be will have slightly more amenities than the others. Um, nobody was able to guess it. Okay, well, where are all my British and and uh, New Zealand and Australian people? Okay, well, it's not. So, these, my friends, are English crumpets. They are in a heart shape because I actually did not have a round cutter. <laughs> So while I was making them, I had to make them in a heart shape because that's the only cutter I literally had that I could cook with. But they are English crumpets. So these are what you would normally have with tea. And what they are is basically for, you know, my non, my non crumpet eating friends um, is a crumpet is kind of like a cross between an English muffin and a pancake. So if you can imagine, it's got the flavor and chewiness and and um, big holes and gaps and stuff as an English muffin, except it's got the softness and delicateness of a pancake. Um, it's not sweet. It's just like a bread. But yeah, it's made on the stove and you have to, the batter is made with like yeast and stuff. So it's it's leavened that way. And then you you cook it on like a on a pan it takes forever to cook it like forever um, but uh, yeah when you're done you're left with this little puffy bready kind of thing so that's what they are they are English crumpets and the, you put the same stuff on them as you would toast so um, I would have done honey and butter so like you, you always do butter first and foremost. You always put butter on crumpets, but uh, then you usually top it with something like jam or something. I was gonna put honey, but um, I don't have any honey. I have jam, but I don't feel like jam today. So it's just crumpets with butter for today. Um, and yeah, so English crumpets is that that's what they are. Uh, let's see here. Henrietta got it. Henrietta said crumpets. Yep. All right, let's see. Um, hello, Joshua. RMMV Oceanic says, hi, Queen Mary. You must know the Queen Mary. Uh, Tyler Frederick says, there is a pipe organ that the church in Salt... That, that the church owns in Salt Lake... Do you think we as a church would have loaned it to White Star if Britannic didn't have her own, or would it be too big? I I don't know. Uh, I don't even know what what the church would have anything to do with White Star Line. Mr. Olive says, two questions if you don't mind. I don't mind. Um... Strasburg says, I'm sorry I'm late, but also if you ride on the Queen Mary 2, will you make a video on it? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, like, I always, like I'm always telling everybody on these live streams, eventually one day I'm going to take a transatlantic crossing on the Queen Mary 2. The, the whole goal is for filming stuff for the channel, because obviously my channel focuses on history. And there's a lot of history in the UK, in, you know, France, in Ireland... You know, so um, so I actually want to take a transatlantic crossing over there and film a lot of stuff. But part of the filming will be of the Queen Mary 2 itself because it's doing its transatlantic crossings, it's not like a typical cruise. A cruise is like slow and leisurely and you're going to these beautiful places. Not that Southampton isn't beautiful, but, um, <laughs> but it, it's no, you know, Bahamas or anything. But... Um, but the whole idea of the transatlantic crossing is is for transportation. It's to get you from one place to another, and it's it's you know it's um, it's a tradition you know that goes back to their days when the only way to cross was on a transatlantic ocean liner, 
And the Queen Mary 2 is the last remaining ocean liner. So it's a, it's a huge thing for me that I, I really want to do that. I really want to take a transatlantic crossing and film the whole thing. And the other part, too, is that the Queen Mary 2 isn't a very old ship, uh, not compared to, like, the ships I'd be covering on my channel. But there are aspects of it that I think that would make for very good history videos for the channel. So that's why I want to film everything. It's it's honestly the trip is going to be one giant trip for filming for the channel. So let's see here. Now it's time to pour the tea. Teapot fine there. You can go over here. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, sugar. So in case I didn't say it, today is Irish breakfast tea. One and a half. And let's see. Oh, wow. Blue Ribbon Productions joined the team. Really nice. Yeah, if you guys want... Um, so I have uh, a Patreon that you guys could join if you want. Uh, the first tier lets you uh, get your name put on uh, my videos. The second tier allows you that plus access to my Discord server. Um, but if you join on my actual YouTube channel uh, and pay there... Uh, then there's three different tiers and they give you access to like different kinds of perks, you know, um, special videos and things that I can't release to the public, um, you know, access to my Discord server to directly talk to me and stuff. So um, all that can be seen using the links down below in the description. And if you're watching on a computer or something, you might even see a little button beneath the screen that says join. And that will take you directly to uh, a link that will allow you to join the channel here. So that's what Blue Ribbon Productions did. Um, now let me read some more. Disney fan says, to be honest, I don't like focusing on ships than Disney. Please go back to being just a Disney historian. Well, you know, Disney fan, you know... I think it's important I mention this for people who are still watching who want me to go back to Disney only. There are several problems with it, um, and I'll try to be quick and brief about my description because this is, you know, this, these live streams are meant to be fun. But essentially, the reason why I don't do, do Disney anymore is because of several reasons. One, there are a ton of super popular YouTube channels that do that, and I can't compete with them. I tried. For years and years I tried, and I can't do it. Um, I don't know. There's various reasons why their channels are better than mine at getting viewers and stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah. And I can't compete with that because this channel is my full-time job. And so I'd post a, a Disney video, and then nobody would watch it. Nobody. But I post a video about an ocean liner or something, and it gets thousands and thousands of views. So... You know, it it actually hurts my channel to post videos that people don't watch. So that's the thing. Uh, that's one of the things that, that I keep, the reason why I can't go back to doing Disney all the time. Um, the other thing, too, is I no longer live near Disneyland. I live a thousand miles away. And, you know, and I realized soon after moving here that there are videos I want to make that I can't make because I don't have access to the park. And I have friends who've offered to help take video footage, but sometimes, you know, they, they go there and the thing that I want them to film is behind a construction wall or something. And it's just inconvenient to always be asking, you know, film this, film that, film this, film that for me. And, you know, so that's part of the reason, you know, and then another reason is that, frankly, I've lost my love for Disneyland, you know, after 
after seeing what happened to the park after it reopened from the pandemic and just what horrible things it's like over there now, it just doesn't interest me anymore, you know? The park that I loved when I was a kid is gone. It, it, Disneyland looks so different than it did when I was a kid. And even the way it operates and, you know, its level of guest service is, doesn't match anymore to what it used to be. So, you know, these three big reasons, it's just not, it's not doable for me anymore. And like I said, I post a video about something Disney and then it, it, it will sit there for weeks and weeks and weeks and it'll only get like at most a thousand views. Whereas these other videos will go tens of thousands of views after sitting for that same amount of time. So it's just, there. it's a dead subject for my channel. I've tried, for years I've tried. And 2020 was when I decided I had to make a change because the channel was dying and people were leaving by the droves despite the fact that I was making a lot of Disney content. So it's, it's a dead subject on my channel. I don't know why, but other channels do it way better than I do. They're, they attract their viewers. I guess, I guess people are more interested in seeing vlogs where people go to the park and eat the food than they are interested in seeing stuff about, you know, the America Sings attraction in 1974, you know? So it's just, I, I'm thankful for the people who, who love my history content on Disneyland and who love the detail and the work, the hard work I put into those things. Um, and I still plan to try to at least finish publishing the other videos I've had to take down from the channel due to copyright issues. So I'm still planning on, on completing all of those. I just can't do it all at once because I also have to focus on the success of the channel. So, um, so those will still come out and eventually I'll have a full complete list of, I think 35 videos about Disneyland. Um, but aside from that, you know, from now on, I'm focusing on my other interests, trains, ocean liners, you know, the golden age of travel, you know, old Edwardian and Victorian buildings and, you know, technologies from long ago. Those are really my interests. Those are things that I can still access very easily. Um, and yeah, Disneyland, it's, you know, it's, it's sad what it's become, especially in the last two years, you know, it's just changed so much, so much. Uh, yeah. But uh, now back to other stuff. Um, uh, where is the... Anchor Hardware says, how was your day, Alex? Not very productive, actually. I was hoping to get some work done on a video, but I, I realized I wanted to make crumpets for the tea time, and I didn't realize it was literally going to take me all morning because I only had one mold, and I was pouring the batter into the mold, and I could only cook one at a time. And there was eight, eight to cook. And each one took, like, ten minutes. I'm not even joking. It took forever to make them. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, I spent all morning making them, uh, but it's been a good day otherwise. Um, Henrietta says, Alex, I'm having the same tea with eight digestives. Nice. I'm going to try one of these crumpets while I'm reading your guys' comments because I am so excited. Let's see. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of nice little pockets there to catch the butter. Let's see. Can you see it? Those just absorb the butter. Wait a minute. Disney fan 2005 wanted me to go back to making Disney stuff, but you weren't even subscribed to the channel? Well, now that's not fair. Mm, let's see. Oh, Blue Ribbon Productions is in West Palm Beach. Wow. I'm guessing that's Florida, right? Palm Beach, Florida. 
Well, that's right, because you're taking a cruise now, aren't you? Uh, Mr. Olive says, the first question was, what is the difference between the Queen Mary II and the Queen Elizabeth II? And the second question was, what, what does RMMV mean? I know the last two of RMMV. MV is the motor motor vessel, but I don't I don't know. Is it Royal Mail motor vessel? I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Royal Mail motor vessel, RMMV. But the difference between Queen Mary II and Queen Elizabeth II, there's a lot of differences. I mean, uh, they're but they're both ocean liners, so that's the similarity. But Queen Mary II is far bigger than Queen Mary II. I'm sorry. Then uh, Queen Mary II is far bigger than Queen than the Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, it's you know it's got more propellers. To, you know it doesn't necessarily go faster though. That's the funny thing. It goes slower, but it does have more horsepower. Um, you know one's newer than the other. You know because Queen Elizabeth II was built in the 1960s. I don't know what what you specifically mean. I mean I could go on for hours and hours about the differences, but. But uh, yeah, they're 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 just two different ships, you know. Uh, Vincent says, "Hey Alex, what's your take on the RMS Queen Elizabeth? I know you talk about Queen Mary, but it doesn't really seem like Queen Elizabeth gets any love from the public." Um, it does get love. That's the funny thing is, like a lot of people have said the same thing to me. They go, "You know, the Queen Elizabeth seems like a ship that's been forgotten," and I'm like, you know. When I look at the ocean liner community, with all the people talking about Queen Elizabeth, it's not forgotten at all. I almost feel like I see more content on Queen Elizabeth than I see on Queen Mary. I mean, sure, there's a lot more old-fashioned documentaries that were once on television all about Queen Mary. That's true. But in terms of the ocean liner community having a presence on Facebook and YouTube, there's a lot more Queen Elizabeth content than there is Queen Mary content. So she still gets a lot of love. That being said, uh, I do want to make videos about the Queen Elizabeth. Um, I'm, you know, I'm still researching it, but I know a lot about the Queen Elizabeth right now. I, in fact, I know enough about it that I'm pretty confident I could make a video about it of some kind, and it would it would be well made. So um, I will I will work on a Queen Elizabeth video, several videos. Just like I do videos about Queen Mary, like all the weird little ins and outs of the ship, I'm also going to do the same exact thing for the Queen Elizabeth. I was just doing a lot more research because, as you know, in terms of books and stuff, there's less information about Queen Elizabeth in books than there are, you know, of Queen Mary. Uh, but what do I think about it? Uh, I think the Queen Elizabeth... There was a time when I didn't like it so much, but... It's kind of grown on me after all this time of doing research and stuff. It's a beautiful ship. Um, I prefer the Queen Mary over the over the Queen Elizabeth, but I do think the Queen Elizabeth was a beautiful ship, especially on the inside. Um, and it, it she's got a lot of similarities to Queen Mary in that sense, but she's got her own style. And yeah, she is a really amazing ship. So... I will eventually be making the same kinds of videos I make about Queen Mary for the Queen Elizabeth. Uh, all the little weird tidbits and stuff that I can add, I'll make that for Queen Elizabeth. That way, people who are fans of Queen Elizabeth can get the, that, that kind of level of detail that they want from a YouTube video. Um, so I hear you. I hear you. Um, oh, I was right. Tyler says it was Royal Mail Motor Vessel. Uh, Anchor Hardware says, what was the green material used on the SS United States? Uh, or, or SSUN. Oh, sorry, SSUN. I don't know what the SSUN is, actually. I thought you meant SS United States. I was going to say, are you talking about the, uh, the little green, like, uh, treading that they put on the whole thing so you don't slip. I thought that's what you meant, but... Uh, hello, Scanfan Ed. Oceanic asks, is it true that RMS Olympic sank a submarine or U-boat during, during the war? It is true, yes. Uh, the Olympic was passing 
close by a, a U-boat, and the captain ordered uh, the um, Olympic to steer right for it, and it sliced the U-boat right in half before it could escape. So, um, pretty cool story. Uh, let's see. Um, hello, Titanic Gaming. Rayanne says, I don't understand why your Disney videos don't get more views. They are such high quality. You know, I know. I put a lot I put a lot of work into those videos. And they get seen by the subscribers, but they don't get seen by new people. That's the funny thing. Like, I get like five new people, you know, but but when you know, like for instance, when I put out a video about, you know, ocean liners and stuff, I will get hundreds of new subscribers from it. But when I put out stuff about Disney, no one watches it. Just my subscribers. And not even all the subscribers either. I only get a tiny fraction of my subscribers that actually watch the video. I know because my video analytics tell me. Um, so it's weird. Like, you know, it literally people on my channel who used to watch Disney stuff, most of them stopped watching Disney stuff. And it's like I said, I don't know what it is, you know. But if it had been that popular, I would have kept going. But I literally... I tried for a whole year, the entire year of 2020, I tried really hard to maintain doing Disney videos, but with nobody watching and with the views, the views still plummeting, I couldn't keep it, I couldn't keep it going. It, it was just dying. It was killing the channel. So... Oh, Anchor was asking about SS United States decks. Um, I don't know 100%, but I'm, I think it was a type of paint that they painted onto the steel that, that was, like, grippy and allowed people to walk on it without sliding. I think that's what it was, but I don't know for 100%. Goji Gamer says, I'm making bagels. Nice. I used to love making bagels. They are a, a bit to do, though. Um, Titanic Gaming says, did you, hear the, did you hear the time when Disney tried to make a theme park in Long Beach with Queen Mary? Yeah, I actually made a video about that. Luke Michael says, which do you prefer, Lusitania, Mauritania, or Aquitania? Mauritania. For sure. It would for me it would go Mauritania, Lusitania, Aquitania. And the reason why it's in that order is because while Aquitania was beautiful on the inside, I don't like the way she looks on the outside. Uh, Vincent says, What's your opinion on the Queen Elizabeth? I know you like Queen Mary and Oh, but I already I already told you that. Uh, then again, I'm also kind of reading, I think I'm, I'm, th I think I'm far behind on comments, so let me try to catch up. <sighs> Let's see. Jess Wervin says, your Disney content is why I subscribed, but I stayed for the Queen and the rest. Oh, thanks. Uh, Carl asks about some movie with two guys escaping prison in four locomotive engines. I, I don't know. I've never heard of that. Scanfan Ed says, Alex, I believe you mentioned that the train set behind you was damaged in the move. Are you hoping to get it going again? Thank you for the content. Um, yes, so it so the, the track work was damaged while I while it was being moved. The bridges were just just pieces started falling off of them. 
I can't safely run any trains on the track because some of the bridges are literally not even supporting the track anymore. So I need to rebuild some of the bridges uh, because if I try to run a train over it, the, the heavy engine would just would just bend the track. So um, the funny thing is, is I could get it fixed up enough to get it running if I had super glue. But believe it or not, like I am literally living paycheck to paycheck. I do not even have the money for super glue at the moment. So, um, so I am waiting for that. That's literally, so it will probably be a couple weeks or something. So I am, yeah. But as soon as I have the super glue, I'll make some videos for the Alex Abner channel showing me repairing the bridges and then, uh, and getting the track up and running. I might have a new problem, which is, so there's the thing that powers the train set is what's called a transformer. Um, I don't know where it is. I put it in the, like all my, all my cars, everything about this train set was put in one box and that box, you know, I opened it up to get stuff out of it. The box was already open, which was really weird because I never needed to open it for two years because I had no reason to take anything out of it. But, um, but yeah, when I, when I took the box out of the, out of the, the garage, it was already open. And after taking everything out of the box and seeing all my train cars or everything are still there, the one thing that's missing is the transformer, which is really weird. Those transformers can be like 200 bucks sometimes, depending on which one you buy, but those transformers can be 200 bucks. And I'm like, I hope I have that because I do not want to buy a new one. Um, like, yeah. So that's the other thing. So even if I got the bridges repaired, I need to find the transformer that powers the, the, the track. Otherwise, the whole thing will not run. So, um, yeah, that's the other thing. But, yes, eventually I will have the trains operating. And the, the goal is when I do these Tea Time live streams, they'll be running around in the background. So, And then, of course, there'll be videos on my second channel uh, showing the progress of the construction of the of the model train layout. You'll see it go from being just white foam to being a, um, like a, like a forest logging camp, essentially, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so eventually you'll see all that. Uh, Nick says, my grandfather came to America on the Queen Mary. That's awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of people who, who, uh, immigrated to the United States on the Queen Mary. Uh... Titanic Gaming says, why did people remove the half-war gray on Queen Mary? I mean, it's the same reason why you remove war paint from all ships that are previously ocean liners and stuff. You know, it, it's when the war is over, you don't need it to be that war color. It, it needs to return to its service colors. Um... Megan says, hey, Alex, do you have any interest in ships that were used in the Antarctic expeditions, such as the Bell, Bell uh, or the Endurance? Um, no, not really. I, I'm more of an ocean liner fan, you know, transatlantic British ship, some, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not, I'm not much of like a, of like a, like a sailing ship fanatic and that kind of thing. I, I just, I love ocean liners, you know. Queen Mary, Titanic, that kind of thing, you know. Um, but yeah, not not uh, not sailing ships, not uh, masted sailing ships. Um, hey, Michael. Vincent says, between Olympic, Titanic, and Britannic, which would you prefer? I guess... I guess Olympic? I think Olympic. Yeah, because it's, it's got a more interesting story to me. 
Blue Ribbon Production says it's a rubber compound concrete. Oh, okay. Uh, Michael Murphy says tea and cinnamon rolls. Yum. There's no cinnamon rolls here. This is all British stuff. So I have um, I have chocolate covered digestives here. I have Scottish shortbread here, and I have crumpets right over here. So, yeah, I better finish these crumpets. Will S650 says, do you think Queen Mary would survive a torpedo? It depends on where it would hit, but yes, I think it would. And there are certain areas where if you hit the Queen Mary with a torpedo, it would not survive. Crittenden says, have you played Floating Sandbox? No, I don't know what that is. Um... Armas Queen Mary says, what ship was bigger, Campania or Lucania? I believe Campania was bigger. Chris says, what would you, what would you have done if we didn't go to the Queen Mary that one time? Where do you think your channel would be right now? Well, um, at that time, I was still thinking about doing other history besides Disneyland. So, because at the time, my channel was dying right then. So I knew that I needed to come up with a different idea. And I had ideas for, for doing videos on New Orleans and doing videos on San Francisco. So those were, those were in my head at that time. So I, I figure if I never got into Queen Mary by going that one last time, I probably wouldn't have gotten into Ocean Liners uh, on my channel, to be honest. But I probably would have been doing other stuff. Like, there probably would have been those New Orleans videos on my channel right now. There probably would have been those San Francisco videos on my channel. So, I did one San Francisco video. No, two, technically, because I did a video about the... Um, about the cable cars, and then a video about the uh, Yerba Buena Harbor, or Yerba Buena Cove. So, and then I have more videos on San Francisco coming. Uh, I don't think anybody will watch those, but I think they're interesting stories that I want to tell. So, um, but yeah, so I think I would have just been doing that, but there wouldn't have been ocean liners on my channel. Yeah, that was a that was a big change in my life was going to see the Queen Mary that final time. Cause that's when something just clicked and I just felt like I had to make content about the Queen Mary. Oceanic asks, who helped more during the war as a hospital ship, Britannic, Mauritania, or Aquitania? I don't know. At this point in time, I don't know enough about those three ships to be able to, to tell you. Empire of Waterloo says, hold on, you know, that crumpet got stuck in my throat. Empire of Waterloo says, I really, really love the video, A Brief Explanation of Narrow Gauge Steam Railroads. Nice work. Very informative and interesting content. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to branch out to more subjects because Ocean Liners is not a big enough subject for my channel. Um, yeah, I don't think I'll ever cover as many ocean liners as some channels do. Like, there's ocean liners I, I don't want to talk about just because I'm not interested in them, you know? Like the RMMV Oceanic, you know? Or, or Normandy, or SS United States. Like, I'll probably, probably never make history videos about those ships just because I'm not interested. So my channel has to be able to expand beyond just ocean liners. It has to do more stuff. So, but 
I think that the stuff I plan to cover is really interesting. So I'm hoping that even if people are not, even if people are here for ocean liners or if they're here just for Disney or if they're here, you know, for trains, I'm hoping that they are, they're, they're willing to, to watch some of these other videos and see that there's some really interesting stuff out there that has a cool story behind it. So, uh, Will says, Alex, if Queen Mary got scrapped, do you think the city of Long Beach would have bought another ocean liner? No, not at all. Um, they, they, they almost didn't even buy the Queen Mary. It was just by pure happenstance that, that they were, that the people, the two people who were spearheading the, the, uh, the movement to purchase the Queen Mary, you know, those two people, they really lobbied the city and, and got a whole bunch of support behind them, but they only barely got all that support. So no, I, I don't think Long Beach would have ever purchased another, another ship. Empire of Waterloo says, also, I'm going on a cruise this week. I'm going to pretend it's an ocean liner. Unfortunately, no Art Deco tea sets, though. <laughs> Matthew Mahoney says, Queen Mary's cabin should be restored. I agree. Yeah, they should. These are so fluffy. Crumpets are really good. Um, yeah. Luke says, do you think that the Titanic and Olympic were switched? No. There's tons of information out there that proves that they were never switched. Titanic Gaming says, when I said that, why did it be removed when she was a hotel? Uh, you'll need to be more specific because sometimes sometimes people post a comment and then they decide to add on to their comment way further down. And because I read this stuff at a delayed a de a, at a delay from you guys, uh, I, I can't put the two and two together. So I don't know what you're talking about. You'll have to put it all in one sentence. Um, oh, hello, Jeffrey. Skidoo is here. Hey, good evening. Uh, Vincent says, Alex, would you do any more videos on hot takes of, of ships? That was really entertaining. Yeah, I will, actually, but I don't want to put too many too close together because I don't want people to think I'm just like a hater of ships, you know. I have to eventually post stuff about ships I love. <laughs> but yeah, eventually I'll be making videos just like that Normandy video where I talk about other ships that I really don't really care for. Because I think that despite the fact that I don't care for them, I think that um, it's interesting topics. Rianne says, I've been enjoying your latest videos and format. I've learned a lot and even had questions answered about things I never thought about. Thanks. Yeah. Um, for a while, I've been wanting to do videos like that where I talk about just these little subjects, you know, and some of them are inspired by people's questions, you know, like, um, well, this one wasn't more of a question so much as a comment. There was a lot of people just saying, oh, the Queen Mary is top heavy because she has no boilers. And I'm like, that's not true. 
they weighed her down. But after responding that same response to God only knows how many comments by now, I was just like, you know, maybe it's time to make a video about it. And and the thing is, is that producing a full video that is nothing but footage of other stuff takes a long time. It takes weeks. And so I knew that I needed to create a series that was easier to edit so that way I can get those videos out faster. Because people want to see content every week. And so... In between doing my little history documentaries, I decided to do those videos, which are easy. I just talk in front of a camera, I explain the things I need to explain, do a quick editing to put it all together, and then upload it. And those have been really popular videos. I'm really surprised. I honestly thought that my documentary style videos would be way more popular than that, but so far it doesn't look to, look to be that way. It looks like people like the simpler format of that. That's not to say that I'm only going to switch to that. I still like the idea of doing little documentary style videos. So I'm still going to be doing them, but at least in between those, I can put out these much easier videos that really go deep into the subject and stuff. So, um, and I'm going to be doing the same thing I do for the Queen Mary videos. I'm going to do the same thing for the Queen Elizabeth. Um, and who knows, maybe even Mauritania if I get to know more about Mauritania. Uh... RMS Queen Mary says, how did the SS Princess Louise capsize? So they say that there was an area of the hull that they, that they had previously cut open during dry docking to remove some things from below the ship. And then they patched it up with a temporary patch. And then they refilled her dry dock. And they say that that patch burst. And that's how she capsized. Um, but that's only one of the many stories. Some people say that that uh, somebody literally opened a valve or something and allowed the ship to flood. You know, like it. You know, so there's different stories. Some people believe that it was done on purpose so that way the bank could um, could uh, seek uh, the insurance money. And some people thought that it was an accident and the patch just burst. So I don't think at the moment there's enough information out there to tell us precisely the truth of how it sank. All we have is the theories. So how it capsized, I mean. So, um, yeah. And I think the... I think the thing about the patch is probably more realistic because the same thing happened weeks later when they towed her out to sea. They patched her up again to tow her out to sea and those same patches burst. And that's how she took on water a second time and she finally sank to the bottom of, you know, of the California coast. So a really sad story. As soon as I first learned about the SS Princess Louise, I was like, this is a sad story of a murder. I was like, I have to make a video about this. Um, <sighs> Ivan says, hey, Alex, I'm a bit drunk at the moment, but I just want to say as Olympic Titanic fan, I freaking love your videos. Love your tea time. No one here in Cape Town is interested in ocean liners as I am. Watch... <laughs> So watching your tea time with my fellow humans who appreciate ocean liners is a blessing. Love you all. Oh, thank you so much. I, no, you're not being rude at all. Don't worry. I just hope you're doing okay. <laughs> uh, Skidoo says, when did you first he learn slash hear about the Queen Mary? Um, so I had been going to the Queen Mary since I was a kid on occasion. Not very often, but every couple of years or so, uh, when my dad had time off of work or something, we might drop by the Queen Mary. Uh, again, this was so very infrequent. Like, I almost never went. But as a kid, I have memories of the Queen Mary. Random little tidbits. But as a kid, I remember asking my dad, I said, what, what ship is this? He goes, oh, it's, it, he's like, it's like the Titanic. And I'm like, oh, okay. 
And so I literally thought the Queen Mary was somehow related to the Titanic. I mean, some people would say, oh, yeah, you know, she's like a distant cousin of Titanic. But but I, my point is, is like, you know, you almost think of it like when you're a kid, you almost think of it as like a sister ship. So I literally thought the Queen Mary was like built at the same time as Titanic and operated with the Titanic. But that wasn't it. You know, my dad didn't really know much about the Queen Mary at that time. So, um but as I grew up, as a teenager, like, I went again to the Queen Mary uh, with some friends. Uh, I didn't pay much attention to it. We didn't even explore the ship that much. Um, I went again uh, after I became an adult. I, I had tickets to the Queen Mary that were discounted, and I told my dad, I said, hey, let's go. You know, I just want to see the ship. And we took an audio tour of the ship, and... Um, and the audio tour was pretty cool. I was like, oh, this is interesting. This is great. You know, like, I'm surprised that when I did that audio tour, I didn't fall in love with the ship. I'm surprised because I learned some amazing stuff on that audio tour. But uh, but it, it didn't it didn't sh strike me the, the way that it did my final time being there. Uh, my final time being there was January of 2020. My friend Chris... Uh, was like, hey, we should all hang out on the Queen Mary. He was talking to me and my friend uh, Steve. We'll call him Steve R, because I have another friend named Steve on this channel. Um, but, yeah, so my friend Steve R, you know, uh, yeah, he, he was like, oh, yeah, let's hang out there, too. And, you know, and so I was like, eh, I don't know. Like, can't we go somewhere else? But, you know, my friend Chris was like, come on, let's just do it. Let's just go. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So I'm like, well, maybe I can film a, a vlog there or something, you know? And I'm like, and I, w I and so the night before, I remember going on Google and, and I was like, I'm going to do a little bit of research real quick so I can, like, say a couple of fun facts on my vlog the next day. So I did a quick Google search. A lot of the information I found was absolutely incorrect. I know that now. But, um, but I went there... And I, I thought, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to have a fun time on this old ship and hang out with my friends, laugh and joke around and whatever. But as I walked through the ship with my friends, there was something different about that time. Of all the times I'd been on the Queen Mary before, there was something different about this time. I don't know what it is. And honestly, all, all I can say, and I know it sounds so weird, but... It's almost as if when I went in January of 2020, that final time, it was as if the ship was calling out to me, asking for help. And I, I can't describe it because like I said, like, you know, I had been to the ship plenty of times before and I've had opportunities to take tours and learn so much about the ship and it just never clicked. And that last time I was there, I just felt connected to it. I was like, I, I, I have to make videos about the ship. I have to talk about this ship. No one's talking about this ship, you know? And so, um, so when I got home, I, I remember doing a bunch of, doing a bunch of research. I was watching videos and stuff. There was the same people who posted videos of the Queen Mary. It was often the same stuff over and over again. Oh, she was, a. a, a you know, a troop ship during the world, the second world war. Oh, she, you know, she carried a lot of passengers. Oh, she was fancy. You know, it's all the same stuff that's rehashed over and over again. But uh, but over the course of time, I got a hold of somebody uh, that I had met on the ship um, that last time. I had met this kid named Shiloh, and he is a huge Queen Mary nerd. And I thought, well, I want to get into doing Queen Mary videos, so I need somebody to help introduce me into the Queen Mary history. Because it's one thing to buy a book, but it's good to have someone who can answer your questions. And this kid knew a lot. He's probably watching right now. Um, but so I, I would like send him emails and stuff and I'd be like, oh, can you answer this about the ship and answer that about the ship? And, um, and so that's, so Shiloh introduced me basically into the history of Queen Mary and helped me get, you know, like a, a you know, a foothold into the history and as I just dug deeper and bought books and, and learned a whole bunch of stuff about the ship, it just it just kept catching. It was like the Queen Mary was like roots growing into my brain, just digging deeper and deeper the more I learned. And 
now I've got such a, a hold on the ship, I, I can't let it go, you know? So that's how I got into the Queen Mary, but it really was a, a weird story, you know? It, I really, truly felt like this, this the last time I went there was a total difference. It was as if, you know, it was as if I needed to help the ship, you know? So that's what, that's what it was like. Um... Vincent asks if, if the Queen Elizabeth had been saved like the Queen Mary, where do you think she would be docked? I think if she had been saved instead of catching fire like she did, I think that she might have had a good career as a floating university like she was going to be. And then she probably would have been sold to another city or something as a hotel um, as to where that would be, I don't know, but I have a feeling it wouldn't be in the United States. You know, who, who knows how long she would have lasted as a, as a university. I mean, the guy had a successful business. He had several ships that were universities that he had, or that he, I should say that he converted to universities. So the Queen Elizabeth would have been another successful ship. He had a good business going. So she would have had a successful time as a, as a university. But as to what happens after, you know, that, that time as university is over, I don't know. I don't know where she would have been sold to. I don't think it would have been the United States, though. Probably somewhere in Europe, maybe. She probably would have been sold to a European country or something, or maybe an Asian country of some kind, uh, East Asian, South Asian, I'm not really sure. Um... Matthew Mahoney says, why did Long Beach buy the Queen Mary? Um, so it's kind of a long story, but let's just say there were these two guys. They were good friends. They, uh, they both, you know, had connections with the city of Long Beach. Um, and when they learned that the Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth were being sold off, uh, one of them had this crazy idea. He told his friend, he said, what if, what if we brought her here? to convert her to a hotel and convention center. And this person had many successful businesses before. He had these really crazy harebrained ideas that ended up becoming successful. So, um, so he convinced his other friend who has a lot of connections with the city of Long Beach. He said, can we convince them to buy the ship and operate it as a tourist attraction? And he got talked into it so they both started talking to their people in the city. There was a lot of opposition. Uh, you know, people were like, well, why would we buy the Queen Mary? I mean, people loved the Queen Mary. They did, but they didn't see a point to buying her. But they managed to convince everybody that she would be a, a profitable tourist attraction. And Long Beach really wanted a tourist attraction. Because, you know, Disneyland was nearby. L.A. was nearby. Two popular tourist places. And Long Beach wanted to have their name put on the map. And so, with the Queen Mary being world famous, at the time, she was the most famous ship in the entire world. Even more famous than Titanic back then. I don't think Titanic's popularity surpassed Queen Mary until James Cameron's movie came out. But the Queen Mary was the most popular ship in the world, the most um, well-known, famous ship in the world at the time. So the idea that if Long Beach could purchase the Queen Mary and bring it over, they honestly thought this will bring millions of people every year. And they were right. They were right. The problem came with after they purchased the, the, the ship, they got it, and they're like, now what do we do? Oh, well, here's 10 million ideas for the ship, and, you know, let's just do all of them without actually thinking about how this will affect the business of the ship. So they made a, bad, a lot of bad decisions after they got the ship. Uh, 
not the two guys. The two guys were not involved in the business aspect of the ship. They were only involved in trying to preserve the ship. Um, but yeah, so... It was a really long story, but... Yeah, so the city of Long Beach acquired the Queen Mary, and she would have been, and still can be, a very successful tourist attraction. But the problem is, is that most everybody who's operated the Queen Mary, including Disney, did not really know what to do with her. She's a combination of things. She's a combination of museum, of hotel, and of convention center. And so, you know, and part of that is, she, all in total, she's a tourist attraction. You know, people are used to things being separate. They're used to museums being separate from a hotel. They're used to hotels being separate from a convention center. Although now you see a lot more hotels and convention centers mixed together, but back then there was a difference. And so, it, so the Queen Mary was a combination of those three. And they kept hiring companies or people or executives who were really good at focusing on only one of those three aspects. And so as a result, the other two aspects of the ship would get neglected at one point or another. So it's just a lot of bad decisions from people who just didn't know what they were doing. It, even Disney didn't know what to do with it. They are like, uh, let's forget about figuring out what to do with the ship, and let's just build a theme park next to it, and that'll solve all our problems. So even Disney didn't know what to do, which is odd, but, you know, yeah. So that's kind of how they got a hold of, of the Queen Mary. Um, all right, Ivan left already, but if he comes back and sees this, then thank you for joining, Ivan. <laughs> Make sure to take a nap, okay? Um, Blue Ribbon Production says, Long Beach should have saved and preserved the USS Long Beach. That is a weird-looking ship, the USS Long Beach. That is a weird-looking ship. I just have to say that. Titanic Gaming says, Alex, you should play a game called Roblox. People can get 100,000 to 10 million views. I don't want to play Roblox. Uh, Will left. Okay. See you later, Will. Have a good day. <laughs> Blue Ribbon Production says, ship shaming videos about my, <laughs> yeah, about, about my Normandy and other videos I plan to do. Yeah. Zedric plays, says, kind of sad how Queen Mary was once the largest ocean liner in the world, but at least at one time she was the most popular liner. Yeah. And it's true. There, um, there was a time after the Queen Elizabeth burned, Queen Mary became the largest passenger ship in the world. And she held that title till, I don't know. Uh... I, it must have been a cruise ship that surpassed the Queen Mary. And it must have been in the 1990s, I'm guessing. So if anybody knows what became the largest passenger ship in the world after the Queen Mary, because, um, again, Queen Mary became the largest passenger ship in the world when the sister ship, uh, Queen or people are going to get mad at me for saying sister ship, the running mate... Queen Elizabeth, when she burned down in 72, that made Queen Mary the largest passenger ship in the world. So if anybody can tell me which ship surpassed the Queen Mary and when, that'd be interesting. I'm pretty sure it was a cruise ship that surpassed her. Um, let's see. Justin Green says, I stumbled upon your channel and I've learned so many interesting things from your videos. Thank you all for your efforts to create great content. Keep it up, sir. Blessings. Thank you so much. Titanic Gaming says, "Why did they end ocean liners?" I have a video about that actually. Um, it's on it's on my on my channel. Uh, I forget the name, but yeah, it's on my channel. So look it up. Um, uh, 
Yeah, I prefer ocean liners because, you know, I like the idea that you're not, like, you're not cramped in this tiny little airplane fuselage, you know? Like, you can be on this big grand liner and stretch out. That's what I love the idea about ocean liners. Um, hello, Evan Scott. How are you doing? Vincent said, I had no idea there was a third Queen Elizabeth ship until recently. Yeah, there is. Um, let's see. Yeah. Blue Ribbon Production says, Steve A. Yep, you are Steve A, and my friend is Steve R. Uh... Let's see. Titanic Gaming says, All we have left of ocean liners is Queen Mary 2. At least the ship is kept and not a floating brick. Tyler left. See you later, Tyler, in case you still see this. Uh... Mark Cooper says, I... I wonder if Tung Chao Young replaced the burned out Queen Elizabeth and was successful in operating a CYS university using another vessel. There was speculation that the fire was sabotaged. So I, I must put that to rest. Um, so, so yeah, um, Tung Chao Young was the man who operated the CYS university. Um, and he had several vessels that were university ships. So I think maybe three in total, uh, but they were all university ships and, um, and the Queen Elizabeth was going to be one of them. There is many people who speculate that the Queen Elizabeth was sabotaged and burned on purpose so he could claim the insurance money, but that's not true. Um, Mr. Young had been really attached to the Queen Elizabeth and it said that when he found out she burned, he cried. Um, and he had dedicated his building in New York using, uh, he, he removed the Q and the E from both sides of the bow of the Queen Elizabeth. He put one of them in his building in, um, in New York on Wall Street. And there's like a little dedication there, you know, saying like this building or something is dedicated to the lovely Queen Elizabeth and blah, blah, blah. So he loved that ship. He was, he, he was torn to pieces when he found out that she burned. He did not do it for the insurance money. And from what I understand, uh, they, they, uh, didn't even get insurance money from it. So, you know, um, but yeah, so he, he loved the ship and, um, and then another organization got another set of QE and and then one of the ship's anchors. And then eventually that landed in the hands of somebody who installed it um, outside their property in Southern California. Someone here can tell me what city it is. I, Torrance, I think it is. Torrance uh, is where the anchor and the other QE are. But, um, but yeah, that, that building in Wall Street still has the QE. I learned all that information from someone who did a lot of research on it. Um, Kevin Anthony from the Steamship Historical Society had done so much research on that subject. And, um, and he was kind enough to show me his presentation on it. I thought that is amazing. That is amazing research. So, um, and it finally put to rest the notion that, you know, the ship was sabotaged from fire. It just didn't happen. Maybe eventually I'll make a video about that. Uh, you know, he did talk with me and say, oh, you, you know, if you want this information to make a video from, you can do it. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I might make a video about that, but um, let's see. Um, Ivan says, 
Thank you for your videos. I appreciate it. Stay safe, Alex. I'll see you on the next tea time when I'm sober. <laughs> okay. Um... As Karthik says, what if in the place of the Queen Mary there was the Olympic in Long Beach? What would be her condition, and would she have would she have more big fan base than Queen Mary due to the Titanic thing? I think if Olympic was in Long Beach, she probably would have been in relatively the same neglect that Queen Mary was. And the reason why I say that is because, again, uh, Titanic didn't surpass Queen Mary's fame until the James Cameron movie came out. Um, that's when Titanic officially just became way more famous than Queen Mary. And, um, and that skyrocketed. So I imagine that if Olympic had been in Long Beach all that time, yeah, she would have been badly neglected like the Queen Mary. And if she had survived the neglect, then maybe after James Cameron's movie, there would have been major efforts to preserve the Olympic, you know, since it has such a close connection to Titanic. Of course, all that is hypothetical, but, um, but yeah. Uh... Joe says, hi, Alex. Have you ever taken a long-distance trip on a train? No, I have not. Uh, I would, um, but it's very expensive. Mm. It says France was bigger than Queen Mary. Let's see. Put into service at 1962. She was 1,037 feet long. So that does make her longer than Queen Mary. But what is her tonnage? But she wasn't technically the largest. You measure a ship's size by the by the gross tonnage, and uh, the largest that SS France ever got was uh, seventy six thousand gross tons. Queen Mary was uh, just over eighty thousand gross tons. So technically, Queen Mary was still larger. The only thing is that. Uh, is that uh, the SS France was longer than Queen Mary by 20 feet, but she wasn't larger in terms of gross tonnage. So, yeah, Queen Mary was still the largest. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Queen Mary at, at her smallest was 80,000 gross register tons, but she eventually reached over 81,000 gross register tons. So yeah, my question still goes. <laughs> 
What ship became the largest after Queen Mary? Um... RMMV Oceanic says, aside from SS Normandy, which other ocean liner do you dislike? It, it's not like there's one or two others. It, there's a lot of other ships I don't like. I'm not like... I don't understand... <laughs> I don't understand people who just like every ocean liner regardless. I don't understand that. Like, there was one person who commented on one of my videos who said, who said, how can you not like any ocean liner? I like every ocean liner. And I'm like... How can you like every ocean liner? You know, it, usually people have preferences for things, you know, like, you know, like when you have something, you usually have favorites of that something. So there's always one that you like least. And with ocean liners, for me, it's no different than anything else. I, I have my favorites and I have ones that I don't like, but, and there's a lot of ones I don't like, you know, so I don't know how people can, can, not have favorites. That's new to me. That's a new concept to me. Let's see. <clears throat> Still a little bit warm, but not hot. I gotta drink the tea faster. That's what I gotta do. As Karthik says, QE, QE is the largest. Yeah, I know, I know, but I'm asking when the QE burned, when the QE burned in 1972, that made the, the Queen Mary the largest existing ocean liner. But, but what surpassed the Queen Mary for being the largest existing passenger ship? It must have been a cruise ship of some kind in the 1990s. So I'm curious. I'm curious which ship surpassed the Queen Mary first as um, after Queen Elizabeth burned. Uh, oh, look. Um, Steve says, Carnival's Destiny beat Queen Mary's gross tonnage. Oh, wow. I wonder when that was. Carnival Destiny. Let's see. Uh, car, oh, Carnival Destiny ship. Launched 1995. The first passenger ship ever built to exceed 100,000 gross tons. Wow. All right, so that's our answer, folks. After the Queen Elizabeth burned in 1972, that left the Queen Mary as the largest passenger ship that is, still exists. And that the Queen Mary was only surpassed in 1995 with Carnival Destiny. Wait, this says Carnival Sunshine. I looked up Carnival Destiny. Oh, I see. Okay, because it was renamed Sunshine. Okay, I see. It was Carnival. Okay. All right, so yeah. So yeah, the first ship to, to do that was Carnival Destiny. Um, Titanic Gaming says, a video was on my suggestion screen about Queen Mary lifeboats. So wait, I can buy one? Not even buy. 
if you if you are qualified, you can get it for free. So you should look it up. Um, that video that you got in your in your suggestions uh, that has the information for how you can contact the city of Long Beach and get a lifeboat. Again, they are free, but you have to be qualified to get it. So, you know, go to the links and everything in that video. Uh, look it up. See if you're qualified. If you're qualified, get one. You know, uh, we want to save all of Queen Mary's lifeboats. We don't want them to be scrapped. So if you have the ability and you qualify to take care of one of Queen Mary's lifeboats, go now. Go and ask. Um, Transit Biker says, are there any cargo steamers with a fan following? I don't know. I'm sure there are. Vincent asks, would you say the Queen Mary was the largest non-hybrid ocean liner? I would say she's definitely the tallest. Uh... I don't know enough about the ships to say that for sure, but I would think off the top of my head Queen Mary was the largest non-hybrid ocean liner. Yeah, that would, yeah. But that's that's a designation that was never official, so it's not like we can claim that and be like, ah, she was the largest non-hybrid ocean liner. So... Matthew Mahoney says, what is Queen Mary's gross tonnage now? I'm going to go with what, what Steve said. It's around 69,000 tons. Finally, I'm caught up on all the comments. Okay, here we go. Tangen says, I built RMS Carpathia in Minecraft. Wow. As Karthik asks, do you think Queen Mary 2 looks like an ocean liner? She should have had a bit longer stern and bow. She looks more like a crossover of a cruise ship and an ocean liner. I would say she looks like a crossover. I wouldn't say she looks like a classic ocean liner. But, I mean, then again, you know, it's not like I expected anything different. She is a crossover. You know, she's a cruise ship designed to, I mean, sorry, she's an ocean liner designed to be able to act as a cruise ship. So, you know, she's going to look like one. So I have to make <laughs> a disappointing announcement. Um, a lot of people are waiting for my um, for my Spruce Goose video to come out. Well, another more popular channel than me just recently put out a Spruce Goose video. And I know from experience that if I tried to finish my video and put it out too soon after that guy put out his video, mine will not get very many views automatically. I know this because that usually happens with my channel. Um, the more popular channels, they get all the views. Anybody who's ever even typed up Spruce Goose in their searches is going to automatically get um, that guy's video promoted to them. 
and they're going to watch it. It's 17 minutes long. It's got a lot of detail. And if I put out my video soon after, almost, oh, let's just put it this way, not enough of those people are going to watch a second video. Um, because they, there's this, you know, you know how it is. You watch a video about something and you're not usually interested in watching more of that same thing. Uh, you know, you, you've, you've seen it, you've learned it, you don't need to watch anything on it for quite a while. So because of that, um, so because of that, I have to delay my Spruce Goose video. Because again, if I tried to put it out, because I was going to put it out next week, at the end of next week. But if I post it, it'll be too soon, and no one will watch it. So I have to delay my Spruce Goose video. I am really disappointed about that because I was really looking forward to having the video completed and uploaded and everybody watching it by next week. But someone else beat me to the punch. And... You know, and I want the video to have every chance of success, so I need to give people time to, you know, to forget about that other video. Because right now that other video is probably getting tens of thousands of views right now. So. I do have other videos I can make in its place. Um... I have more Queen Mary videos to make. I have... I can make stuff on Queen Elizabeth. I have another video idea about a lake that used to have steamboats on it. As Karthik says, maybe when you start covering other ocean liners, you might gain subscribers substantially. I'm hoping so. Um, that's what I'm really hoping for. So, um, I have to do it in my own way. You know, I don't, I don't like watching videos from people who don't do their due research. They just, you know, Wikipedia something and then read what they read on Wikipedia. I don't like to do that. I'm the kind of person that really digs deep and learns about something. So um, that's why it's taken me so long to even put out other ocean liner videos because it takes me weeks of research. I'm still researching that Johann von Olden Barnevelt video, which I announced like two months ago. So, um, you know, it takes me a long time to fully learn a subject and then be able to tell it to you guys in an accurate way. So, um, yeah. Uh, oh, see you later, RMS Queen Mary. Um, Tangent says, Lake Superior, Minnesota. Now, I I'll stop my head. I don't remember what lake it is. It's a, it's a lake in Idaho. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. So, I forgot what I was talking about, but yes, I hope that other Ocean Liner videos bring in more viewers. That's the goal. But I have to, um, I have to do what I do to make them successful videos. So Conrad says, not clickbait, but you need curiosity building titles. I would love that. Unfortunately, you know, I've been spending years trying to do that. I'm not good at it. You know, like I was having a conversation with my friend Chris last night about about the video thumbnails. Um, you know, the thing is, is that it's easy to say, oh, well, Alex, just do this and do that for your video thumbnails. And that's catchy. It's easy to say that. But then each video requires a different thumbnail. And I'm not good at, at interpreting what I think is eye-catching. To me, what I create is eye-catching. Then I show it to other people, and they're like, oh, 
you could really improve that, you know. I just don't, I don't have, it, it, it's a skill. It's a, it's honestly, it's a skill. Being able to create titles that are catchy and being able to create thumbnails that are catchy. I don't have that skill. I've been trying to build it for years. I'm still no better at it than I used to be. So, you know, I, I wish I could tell you, yeah, I'll, I'll make more catchy titles, but I, I still don't. I still don't have a full grasp on how to do that. So, you know, I have friends that are helping me with that, but, you know, but I, I'm afraid to say that, you know, I, I still don't know. I still don't know what is, what is catchy looking to me. It's catchy looking, you know, but I'm wrong. So I don't know. That, uh, that video I put out about narrow gauge railroads, I made 10 different thumbnails and titles for that video. 10. Because I was trying to figure out which one is the most catchy, which one is the best. And I could not decide. Um, I got, by the 10th one, I was like, you know what? The 10th one, I'm putting it up. That's just it. I'm done. I'm tired. You know, like, I spent hours making thumbnails and trying to rethink video titles. That's why it makes me really mad, like, Someone commented on my video, uh, the one about um, whether Queen Mary was top-heavy. This person didn't even watch the video. I know because of what they said. They commented that the video title is clickbait. Obviously, the Queen Mary is top-heavy without her boilers. I'm like, you didn't even watch the video. Like, in the, if you watch the video, you would see that she is not top-heavy. And I explain why, you know, like... But that's the thing is, like, I try to make a catchy title, and I get accused of clickbait. And that's something I have to live with, you know? Like, everyone tells me, like, I get people who come to my channel, and they're like, oh, your videos are so dramatic, or they're so clickbaity, and blah, blah, blah. You know, why can't you just stick to facts instead of telling these stories? And I'm like, I'm like, you know, people say they want just the straight facts, but the thing is, is that they don't, you know, I try to give them what they want and then they don't like it. The style I've come up with is a winning style. People like my videos the way that I make them. And so I stick with that. And some people don't like being told the stories of, you know, what it's like being on an ocean liner. But I've noticed that most people on my channel do. Most people do. They, they love when I tell the stories about what it was like to be on the ships and stuff like that, you know. And, you know, and I think that's what's missing from YouTube right now. There's all kinds of history videos about, you know, all these famous ships, but there aren't enough people making content about, like, the nitty gritty of the ships. And I think that's where I can come in, you know, into that. So, <sighs> yeah. Uh... Transit Biker says there are a few museum ship channels on YouTube which have covered the fact that mothballed or decommissioned ships have ballast and center of mass issues. 
Yes, they do. That's because those ships are still using traditional ballast, i.e. salt water, as ballast, in lieu of missing boilers and equipment. The Queen Mary doesn't use just salt water. Well, not even salt water. She uses fresh water, as, you know, as Steve from Blue Ribbon Productions told me. But the thing is that the Queen Mary has has other materials in her tanks. She has steel pellets and she has drilling mud, two things that are very dense and very heavy to make up for the weight of the loss of all that boiler steel. So that's why the Queen Mary doesn't have those issues is because she's not just ballasted with water. She's ballasted with equally heavy materials to, re to replace the missing weight of that stuff. So that's why. She doesn't have currently any issues with, um, with her ballasting. She is perfectly balanced at the moment. She is sitting higher in the water than usual. That's because in total there was a lot removed from the ship. You know, Her funnels are not original funnels. Her original funnels were probably heavier because they contained a bit more metal in them. The current ones are just empty shells that are aluminum, you know, um, and stuff like that. So there's things missing from the top decks. There's things missing from the bottom decks. They evened it out, you know. They did the calculations and the measurements, you know, so. Um, but the Queen Mary is not currently top heavy. She's, she's not. If she was, she would have flipped over by now. Oh, let's see. Uh, Conrad says, Armas Queen Mary never received the Blue Ribbon Award. No, that's because they didn't give out the award. It, it wasn't an award. It was just it was just something you could claim as a title. So the Queen Mary never received an award because they never gave one out. There there was no award back then. It was just it, exactly exactly what Blue Ribbon says. It's symbolic. It's not a physical thing. So the Queen Mary she did capture the title of the Blue Ribbon. She was a Blue Ribbon holder for fourteen years. But like I said, they they're, they didn't actually give people a, a ribbon. They didn't give people a trophy or anything. Uh, the Hales Trophy wasn't created until... I'll have to look up, yeah, yeah, see, Steve is right, those are two separate things. The Hales Trophy and the Blue Ribbon are not the same thing. T. Tangen, um, T. Tangen says, oh my gosh, TV is spreading clickbait on the Armist Queen Mary being haunted when she's not. Um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of YouTube channels out there that, so there's something you guys need to know about YouTube. There's a lot of people out there like Omar Gosh TV. They're entertainers, you know, they, they play a character. They, um, their character is a real it, the character they play right is a real person whom experiences things wh wherever they go there's a lot of these people it's not just omar gosh tv there's a lot of people and a lot of them have been on the queen mary as well and these people they create what we might call reality youtube where it looks like reality. They pretend it's reality. We know it's kind of clickbaity. Um, but you see, some things that people are forgetting too is that is that it's the creators don't consider it like reality TV because they're playing a character. So 
And the thing is, that's not made apparent. They don't, obviously, very few of them actually come forward every episode and say, ah, the character I'm playing today is named just like me, looks just like me, acts just like me, but sees ghosts. So they don't do that, obviously, because then people wouldn't watch their stuff. But they are playing a character. And so I've I've come across a few channels that are like that, you know, where they play a character. And, you know, there's... I don't want to name any names because that is not a good idea, believe me. But, uh, but you know, there there is one channel in particular I'm thinking of um, where these, you know, where these, these... I guess I could call them kids because they're far younger than me, I think. But these kids, they, they play themselves as a character of themselves. And they go places and film, as they say, movies. We would think it's like reality TV because they go there filming themselves. But they use a very specific word. They say movies. And that's all the hint they give to their viewers that it's not real. That's the only hint. Because if they come out and say, ah, but my videos are not real, then no one's going to watch it. But they do hint at their audience that it's not real because they call their videos movies. And I respect them for that. And the and to be honest, those guys, in real life, they're really nice guys. You know, they, they have, um, again, I'm not mentioning which channel this is yet because I don't, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus or anything, but... But, you know, they're really nice guys in real life. They, you know, they have like a, like, like charities and stuff like that, that they operate and stuff. So they, you know, they, these, these guys do like, um, like, uh, ghost hunting videos and things. And it's just meant to be entertainment and they, they call them movies. But I've noticed that all their fans in the comments think it's real. They think that these guys are experiencing ghosts quite literally everywhere they go. And I... Me, I'm just like, I don't, you know, I'm like, you know, you, you gotta know it's not real. I mean, how is it that a hundred percent of the time, everywhere they go, they see ghosts? When, you know, like, when there are real paranormal investigators who go their whole lives without seeing ghosts. You know, it's just weird. So you gotta think, like, well, come on, it's not real. And if you can get past the whole, this is fake and it's for entertainment thing then you can probably appreciate it for what it is. Which is how I watch said channel, is because they're entertaining people. Uh, you know, but aside from that, I know it's not real. So when it comes to, uh, you know, as this uh, tangent says, Omar Gosh TV, uh, I don't see a problem with what uh, what he's doing. He's entertaining people. The only thing that I have a problem in general with, not just with him, but just all these channels that do that ghost hunting on the Queen Mary, is very few of these channels are giving back to the ship. You know, they're recording things. They're taking, 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 and using it for their channel, and they don't give anything back. I think the most that they give back is paying for the room that they're staying in. And that's not enough, you know, um, that's not enough. And I've always been outspoken that the whole marketing Queen Mary, uh, Tangent, uh, I agree with your comment, but, uh, the, um, the profanity, I have to remove that from the channel because I don't want to be demonetized, <laughs> but I do agree with your comment. Um, I just have to remove it from the channel because of the because the foul language. But that's it. But yeah, um, yeah. I I've been very outspoken that I do not like that that the Queen Mary is being marketed as a haunted ship. It's okay for Halloween, you know. Like I'm totally fine with that for Halloween because people understand that Halloween is a season; it comes and goes. Um, but the problem with 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 pushing 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 the Queen Mary to be haunted year round, it leads the very important uh the very important uh demographics from not coming to the ship the 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 best demographics the ship could have is children and families those make up the the brunt of the tourism trade those are the biggest demographic is children and families and the queen mary does not market very well to those 
because they're so busy marketing as a haunted ship. You know, um, there's a very famous YouTube channel. Again, I can't name names, but you guys have probably seen her channel. She talked about how she spent, you know, uh, some time aboard the Queen Mary. And she told her viewers that if she had known the Queen Mary was so haunted, she would have never stayed there. Now, that's, that's okay. I, w I would agree. If I thought that a place was so haunted, I probably wouldn't stay there just because I don't want to be creeped out. But that is a perfect example of why the Queen Mary should not be marketing year-round as a haunted place because of that statement. When people say, the Queen Mary is so scary, I will never spend a night there, you just lost money. Your business just lost money right there. That is sad. You know, so that's the problem. Uh, when you market the Queen Mary as nothing but haunted, the only people you're going to attract are the people who love ghosts. Sure, there's some Ocean Liner fans that come to the Queen Mary, but there's no children and families. Those are the biggest demographic. They don't come because they're not there to make their children scared. It's, it's plain and simple. They're not, that's not a haunted building does not sound like, you know, family fun with the Johnsons, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not good for marketing. And, you know, there was, you know, even Disney was, Disney was the first company to market the ship as haunted. That was, I blame Disney for that, for sure. You know, they, they did a lot of poor business decisions. And that's why when people tell me, oh, but even Disney couldn't make the Queen Mary a success, I go, well, look at one of their brochures they're marketing to families, but the brochure has a picture of a kid being dragged by a ghost. That does not shout family fun. That shouts the opposite of family fun. That shouts, do not bring your kids here. This place is dangerous. <laughs> you know, and when they tell people that Disney was the one that came up with the stories of B340 having disembodied, you know, ghosts in there. When you tell people that your hotel is known for having people being ripped limb from limb, you're just, you're cutting more people out of that. And all you're doing is you're, you're, you're whittling down the demographic to the hardcore, you know, ghost hunter, people who love ghosts, people, you know, you're whittling, whittling, whittling it down. You're not growing your fan base. You're whittling it down to its most core people, which is people who love, you know, haunted places. And there's not enough uh, paranormal enthusiasts to make the ship a resounding success year round. There is enough to make it a success during Halloween season. There is, but you notice that the biggest season the Queen Mary has all year is Halloween season. Outside of Halloween season, she's not a very busy ship except for you know, the Scottish Festival. Thank God they have at least the Scottish Festival because that's one way of getting people to come. But like I said, like the Queen Mary, they're just doing it all wrong. Um, let's see. Jeffrey says, do you think they will ever stop doing the Halloween event at the Queen Mary? Uh, I don't see them stopping, no, because at the moment, it's the one thing that makes them the most money. They, Disney started it, but everyone else, they continued to pigeonhole the ship into the haunted aspect. So now they've dug their grave, you know, pun intended. They dug their grave, and now they have to live in it. And so that's why they will not stop doing the Halloween, you know... Uh, event because they need it now. It's the only thing that makes them a lot of money. Uh, uh, Tangent says, also the Queen Mary one is a World War II veteran. Also, sorry, mate, didn't mean to swear. That's okay. I understand. But yeah, she is a World War II veteran. Like, honestly, I like to tell people the Queen Mary has way more history than she has ghosts. 
You know, I, I can't tell you whether or not Queen Mary's haunted. There are people who say she is, and I'm not going to fight that. You know, I do believe there, I do believe ghosts exist. I've never seen a ghost on Queen Mary myself, but I do believe that ghosts exist. Uh, and so who am I to say the Queen Mary isn't haunted? But I will say this. I do not believe the Queen Mary is haunted with evil spirits. The ship feels like a very happy place, a place that was well-respected, well-loved in the old days. You know, people loved being aboard the Queen Mary. It was, whenever I would go onto the ship as a kid and even as an adult, it felt like a happy place, you know? It, a bit run down and in need of some help, but a happy place, you know? So I, I think that people need to focus more on the Queen Mary's history than the ghosts. Um, Blue Ribbon Production says, I would prefer the Queen Mary events remain off the ship, though. I agree. The, the haunted maze that they do on the ship does so much damage to the ship every year. I, I want them to keep all that off the ship. That should stay on the shore side. They can build their little haunt mazes down there and stuff. That, you know, that's perfectly fine. Don't bring it onto this classic ship that is already having issues, you know? Like, we need to preserve it, not, you know, punch holes in it, trying to build haunt mazes and stuff, you know? Um... Uh, S. Karthik says, I just realized that Queen Mary once did belong to my country, as my country was a British colony, and it's so ironic that I like British ships even after how they treated us. Yeah. Uh, Blue Ribbon Production says, the Hotel Del Coronado offers ghost tours, but they are not in your face about it with advertising. Yeah. I think that's beautiful, you know. Hotel Del Coronado does it right. You know, they, they are first and foremost a historic hotel. And they offer, you know, a ghost tour. That's that's great. That's great. They're not in your face about it. They're not telling families, don't come here, your children are gonna get ripped limb from limb. You know, like that's you know, that's that's great, but Queen Mary does it all wrong. And then they sit there. i uh, forgive me for saying this, all you guys, but then these the management sits there and like idiots going, I wonder why the Queen Mary isn't profitable year-round. It's like, gee, you wonder? You know, like, how about you provide some hot water for your rooms? How about you provide a place for people to go swimming on hot days? You know, how about you provide good air conditioning and hotel services? And, you know, how about you keep some of your attractions actually open during the daytime instead of locking them all up behind closed doors? And lastly, why don't you start marketing to children and families, the biggest demographic who can make you the most money? The Queen Mary can be such a cool place for kids. You know, kids, you know, boys, girls, all that. The, every kid at some point will like something about the Queen Mary. If the, if the kids like to learn about the, the size of the ship and how mighty it is, they can learn about that. If the kids like to learn about how the propulsion works, that's really cool. That's a really cool thing that kids can get their hands on and learn about the propulsion of the Queen Mary and all that. Like, you know, like, like, you know, we have you have to get kids interested in that kind of stuff. There's all kinds of things that can interest kids. Some kids like cooking. You can teach the kids about what it was like for people to cook aboard the Queen Mary. Some kids, you know, they they like to learn about like boats and how they sail and you can show them how to how to steer the queen mary like there's it's amazing almost any topic that kids like you can show them something cool about the queen mary that relates to that topic it's almost infinite and so it's just like i'm like why aren't they doing this you know like it's ridiculous um let's see Oh, Crittenden left. Oh, see you later, Crittenden. Uh, Blue Ribbon Production says, actually, our RMSF created the first Halloween event aboard the Queen Mary in 1996. Yeah, but I meant that that um, that Disney started the the haunted marketing. That's all I'm saying. I yeah, I know that uh, that they that they did the other stuff, but Disney started the the haunted marketing. Um. 
Uh, Ray Ann says, Winchester Mystery House has flashlight tours on full moon nights and Halloween, but doesn't play the aspect up much otherwise. It works very well. Sounds like Queen Mary could learn from them. Honestly, you guys are all right. All of you are all right about that stuff. What, the, what management of Queen Mary should be doing is they should be going to other tourist attractions and seeing how they do stuff. The Winchester Mystery House is a successful attraction. You know, um, Hotel Del Coronado, successful historic hotel. You know, the management of the Queen Mary and the city of Long Beach itself even should be going to these places and, and, and paying attention to what these places are doing that makes them so successful. The Queen Mary, the reason why she's not very profitable is because these businesses don't do that. They don't do their research. They don't do their homework when it comes to how other businesses are operating. So they just take a shot in the dark and go, all right, let's 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 do an event where, you know, I don't know, where we where we show an engine room blowing up and getting filled with water. It's like, why don't you just do your research and you'll figure out how to make the ship successful? You know? Like it's it's not hard to understand how other businesses are successful. What's hard is investing your time and money into making your business successful. That's the only hard part. But it's not hard to figure out how other businesses are doing it, you know? You just go and you and you learn it, you know? So yeah, I agree with everybody here. You're all right, you know? Like, the Queen Mary just doesn't do it correctly. Uh, Conrad says Queen, that the statement that I said, Queen Mary has more history than she has ghosts, is a great statement. I am one who would have no problem with the flat-out statement that the Queen Mary has no ghosts. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, it's like I said, I, I know people who say she's not haunted, and I know people who say she is. And I've never believed any of the crazy stories. Like, there's a story of, like, a ghost captain who barged into somebody's stateroom at night and was beating them up. I'm like, I do not believe that story at all. Like, that is ridiculous. Like, the story is longer than that. Like, they, they wake up three times in the night because of that. And each time they complain to the hotel, but the hotel is like, sorry, that's our haunted room. It's like, that's a fake story. You know how I know? Because if you're seriously being beaten up in the middle of the night by someone who barges into your room, you'd be calling the police. You know, like you don't like a hotel would be would would be sued if all they did was go, oh yeah, that's our haunted room. Sorry, you're just gonna have to get punched throughout the night. Like, it's the dumbest story I've ever heard. So yeah, there's some stories on the Queen Mary where I'm just like, that is so ridiculous. But um, but yeah, so um, uh, Thomas Brooks says, what do you think about the expanded second class lounge into the enclosed? Promenade on Queen Mary. Uh, to my knowledge, they didn't do that. Uh, to my knowledge, what they what they did was they built the Chelsea's Chowder House restaurant. But Chelsea's Chowder House uh, is is not part of the main lounge. It's a separate uh, separate thing. So, uh, yeah, I, oh, wait, 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 you're talking about second class lounge. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I was thinking of the first class main lounge. Yeah. Okay. I see what you mean. What do I think about them expanding the second class lounge into the enclosed promenade on the Queen Mary? Um, it's a little disappointing, uh, because, you know, any originality I would prefer for it to stay, you know, like that would be nice. Um, if I had it my way, I would return it to the way it was. I would re restore the second class promenade and restore that whole area. Cause that whole area had like a library and a cocktail bar. I would restore all that to how it looked. Um, I understand why they expanded it. They needed more square footage, I guess, because they wanted to be able to hold all kinds of events in there. But the thing is, is that... It's not like that room is consistently booked out. Yeah, it's booked occasionally, but I mean, I don't think 
the ship has any had any major successes in terms of banqueting. You know, the banqueting does help, but it's not like the thing that earns them all their money, you know. Um, but yeah, I would like to see that that place restored. But that being said, in terms of the second class promenade, it's not a high priority thing. Uh, I would more rather see the second class library be restored and the second class cocktail bar be restored. And then last thing on my list would be that second class promenade because to me that's not such a big deal. Uh, but eventually I would like to see it restored. Uh, Jeffrey says, if you came back as a ghost, would you go to the Queen Mary? Yeah, actually, it's funny you say that. I thought about that. I thought, you know, when I die, if I find out I'm a ghost, the first thing I'm doing is I am setting up permanent residence on the Queen Mary. I, I would want to spend all my ghost retirement years on board the ship. But you know what's an even weirder thought? I don't mean to go so, so creepy, but can you imagine if you're a ghost and you live forever? What are you going to do when the earth eventually gets blown up when the sun explodes. Where are you going to go? <laughs> like, what do you do after that, you know? Like, sure, I mean, you know, thousand years from now, Queen Mary's long gone. Maybe you go somewhere else. You haunt some other house. But what are you going to do when the, when the earth is destroyed and there's nothing left after the sun explodes, you know? Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> I know it's a weird thought, but I'm like, I always think about that stuff. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Tangent says the QE2 is doing better than the Queen Mary. That's true. But at the same time, the QE2 is unrecognizable, almost. They've completely transformed the in interiors to look modern. And I understand why they did it, and I, and I understand that that has helped make it successful. But the Queen Mary is so old, I would not want to see her interiors modernized. Uh, she needs to stay a historic vessel, because she's the last example of that kind of thing that we have. But the QE2 has been heavily modified. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, but Steve, the QE2 is empty because of the, the pandemic, but they're recovering, I think. Um, Oh, Tangent left. See you later, Tangent. Steven says, I think a big problem is if the Queen Mary is leased out to many businesses and they all operate on a temporary basis, they're out for a quick buck and don't care about the legacy of the Queen Mary. Exactly. Yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head right there. They are there temporarily. They know they're there temporarily and they don't care. They're just there to make their money and pocket all of it, and leave the Queen Mary, in, you know, as a trash heap. I agree 100%. Uh, Conrad says, Belfast or Southampton? I recently saw some old footage of the Southampton resident saying that Queen Mary belongs to them. Belfast built her, but her home was port with Southampton. No, actually, um, the Queen Mary... Uh, was built in um, in uh, Clydebank, Scotland. So she was not a Belfast ship. She was a, a, a Glasgow ship. She was a Clydebank ship. Um, but the Queen Mary... Uh, a lot of Southamptoners say that these ships are theirs because, you know, because all these ships came in and out of Southampton. But, you know, I don't know. She, she's a, she is a UK ship, you know, but at the same time... She, she, she did a lot for the United States. So that's the thing is like I don't understand when, like when American people are like, oh, you know the UK should just get the, take back the Queen Mary. We don't need her. She's not a, she's not a, she's not a, a an American ship. And it's like, 
with all the stuff that Queen Mary has done for this country, she has earned the right to be called an American ship. Like, with all the stuff, like, with all the stuff she's done. You know, excuse me, a hiccup, but, yeah, like, it's just, yeah, it's sad that people don't know the history of the Queen Mary, you know? Uh... What? Blue Ribbon Production says RMSF, uh, which is uh, the RMS Foundation, robbed all of the teak decking from that promenade so they could use it on the upper decks in 1999. You're kidding. Oh, my gosh. Uh, find your way to the vortex in the entry to the changing rooms of the swimming pool. Oh, yeah. The vortex, Yeah. Uh, as Karthik says, or rather, transfer Queen Mary to a more busy port like Miami, where many cruises come, and maybe they can make a lagoon there beside the cruise terminals, and people can see the Queen Mary before boarding her, boarding their ship. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like the humid weather would actually wreak havoc on the Queen Mary, because she doesn't have much air conditioning because she wasn't designed that way, so... Uh, so she would be constantly humid, and all that wood with plus the humidity, oof, she would rot away really fast. Um, Conrad says, did you say that a great place for her was Belfast? I thought you were referencing where she was built. No, I, I don't recall ever saying that the Queen Mary was was uh, would be good at Belfast because she wasn't built there. She was built in uh, Clyde Bank, Scotland. Um, I know I did say that I thought that Queen Mary could do well in Liverpool or in Southampton. I I do I still believe that if if the Queen Mary was moved to either Liverpool or Southampton, she would make a good tourist attraction. Um, uh, but yeah, I wouldn't suggest Belfast because uh, the Queen Mary is not an Irish ship. She's a Scottish ship. Uh, yeah. Blue Ribbon Production says, when push comes to shove, the UK has never been huge in preserving something modern, like the Queen Mary or QE2. Yeah, that's true. Um, they usually preserve stuff from the Victorian era or the Edwardian era, but but something as new as the Queen Mary or the QE2, they don't preserve that stuff. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I feel like now, though, they're probably kicking themselves for not having the Queen Mary. I know that Clyde Bank, they were saying like, oh, you know, bring the Queen Mary here. She's our ship. We'll protect her, you know. Uh, I think they might be right, but, you know, maybe they want to. But I don't think there's a whole lot of tourists going to Clyde Bank. You know, sure, the Queen Mary could bring in tourism to Clyde Bank, but I don't think it would be as much as they think it would be, you know. Uh, Oceanic asks, Hi Alex, was there any occasion where Queen Mary or Queen Elizabeth were almost sunk by a torpedo or spotted by a submarine U-boat? Actually, yes. Um, I, I can't answer yet about the QE, but the Queen Mary... Uh, there was a time during the war, I want to say it was 1943, Queen Mary was leaving New York, uh, carrying thousands of troops, and as she left the coast of the United States, uh, she spotted a U-boat submerging, and the U-boat uh, was going to prepare to fire. Uh, the Queen Mary um, then reported the U-boat to a... Uh, an Air Force captain. I forget his name, but he's his name is in the video I did. Uh, Queen Mary during World War II, Part Two, I think it was. I mentioned this story. 
uh, the Queen Mary left New York, spotted a submerging U-boat, reported it to the air the um, the the um, Air Force pilot, uh, a United States pilot, and he then directed uh, some other planes or something to where it is, and they actually destroyed the U-boat. So after the Queen Mary was long gone, uh, the United States uh, people destroyed the U-boat. Um, so the Queen Mary did did do that. Um, there there was a faint story where some uh, where some of the troops that were on board said that they could have sworn they saw a torpedo heading straight for the Queen Mary, but she was so fast that it went right past uh, her um, her uh, uh, stern. So she just went like that, and a torpedo went like that. And but that was never confirmed. It was never confirmed that there was a torpedo there. But some of the men say they saw it, you know. Um, so as off the top of my head, as far as I can think, that's the closest they ever got. They they did they did pass through submarine infested waters several times though. So the Queen Mary, you know, they probably did see a lot more U boats than what is reported in books. Because they were, the, you know, the Atlantic was infested with sub, with submarines. So, um, but as but the only thing I can think of that has been written down is those stories that I just told you. Um, Steve says Q E suffered tremendously when she was in Port Everglades, and that was less than three years. Yeah. Yeah, the humidity just gets to those ships. NCC says, could Queen Mary even make the journey? Uh, I'm guessing to the UK is what you mean. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> no. She was built for the ocean, but she's almost 90 years old. You know, parts of her are reaching 90 years old. Um... You know, she was in the old days. She was good at flexing over those those you know stormy seas and stuff. But you know, even if her hull was strong enough to make it across the ocean, you know, during that time, um, the other issue is that she wouldn't be able to do it under her own power. She would have to be tugged all the way over there, and you know, or towed, I should say, towed all the way over there, um, and. Uh, unfortunately, you know, what, what happens is if they run into a storm, because sometimes those Atlantic storms, they can just pop up like crazy. Um, if they were to try to tow her all the way to the UK, she might run into a storm. And believe me, you know, you would not be able to keep control of the Queen Mary in a storm like that. She, you know, you'd have to let go of the ropes and hope she doesn't drag the tugboats with her. You know, like she that's that's the that's the real problem. I don't think necessarily that she would sink because, you know, because she couldn't handle the storm. I think it's more that they would lose control of her during heavy winds and high seas and she would eventually get lost and you know, and the storm would just beat her up. So I don't think she would last, no. Um As Karthik says, say anything, but Queen Mary needs a better city than Long Beach, and she will do good in the UK, is what I think. Uh, yeah, I agree that Queen Mary does need a, a better city than Long Beach. Long Beach has a proven track record of, record of not taking good care of her. Uh, I would rather see a different city do better. Um, you know, she, yeah, she would, say, I'm not against her being in the UK at all. I'm not. I, I do believe that people of the UK will take care of her, um, but, you know, I do worry about, you know, like, I the reason why I don't think it's ever going to happen is because of just what I mentioned. They can't get her across the Atlantic, and, um, and even if they did, you know, I know that, see, it's one thing for, for the UK to mean well, you know, they they say, well, we're going to take care of the Queen Mary. I believe it. I believe they want to. I don't know that they have the funds to do it, though. Even Long Beach is having trouble with the funds for the Queen Mary. 
Um, but I will say that if they manage to, you know, if, if they manage to keep her a successful business in the UK, then then they should be fine after that, you know. So it's not that I doubt the UK will take care of her. It's that I'm not sure if she would last, if that makes any sense. So I hope that made sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, Conrad, I mean, Long Beach is essentially Los Angeles, but they, they haven't taken good care of her. I almost feel like she would do better in New York or something, because I feel like, I don't know, I mean, I could be wrong, but, but I mean... I almost feel like any major city would take better care of the Queen Mary than Long Beach has, you know. Uh, but I don't know. It's hard to say. It's hard to speculate on something that's never happened, you know. Uh... Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Blue Ribbon says a U-boat put in their entry log that they had the QE in their scope. They fired two torpedoes, but no hit. QE sailed away unharmed. Uh, hello, Mr. Olives. <laughs> You're back, but I'm going to be ending this live stream because it's already well over the two-hour mark. Um, Robert says, There's a great story about a rumor that went around during World War II that QE had been sunk by a U-boat. The rumor made its way to QE's captain at the time who had to break the news to the troops. Oh, that was a that was a Queen Mary story, yeah. And the Qu the Queen Mary story says that uh, that the Italians reported that the Queen Mary had been sunk by a German U-boat, and so um, and so yeah. The the I have it in the book over there. I'd pull it out, but I'm too tired. But yeah, the captain said, uh, "Well, we better we better alert the crew at once," <laughs> and it was a pretty funny thing. Um, The QE had a German coastal scout plane fly between her funnels while making a low pass, but it was too dark for the pilot to see the QE. Wow. Wow, I never heard that one before. That's crazy. Thomas Brooks says, I think that Queen Mary is a lady who got old and then shipped off to a very bad retirement home. Yeah, I agree. They haven't taken good care of her at all. Um, Adventures of the Stones, hey! Says, hello, Alex. Sorry we missed the live stream tonight, but looking forward to the next. Uh, Oceanic asks, I know that that some won't... That, that, some, that some want to talk about the SS United States, but did she... Wait, SS Normandy, I'm sorry, but did she actually help people during the war like the Cunard Queens? No, I mean she she sank before the before the United States even got into the war, so they never even got to use Normandy. She never helped, like the Cunard Queens, because she was burned out and destroyed before that. So, uh, Okay, well, everyone, I am exhausted now. <laughs> um, all right, uh, so the next video coming out is the Benson Hotel. I do, I do highly suggest that everybody watch it. It's a, it's going to be a great video. That video will will publish this Friday, um, and then uh, Thursday we have another. Um, another tea time so this coming thursday at 4 p.m tea time then saturday then i'm sorry then sunday again tea time um you might have noticed that there that you might have gotten a notification for a new type of live stream that's happening on the 16th and it's about the queen mary's dining saloons and how they're abandoned and you know what 
they're doing today. Uh, that is a new series of live streams I want to be doing with Blue Ribbon Productions. Uh, that's, you know, that's uh, Steven. Um, and we're going to be talking about various areas of the ship. On each live stream, it'll be themed to a different area of the ship, but we'll, we'll be talking about different areas of the Queen Mary, what they were, uh, how they operated. You know, maybe Steve will share some stories about his time working on the Queen Mary during her, her days in Long Beach. Um, and then we'll talk about what those areas look like now. I usually will have pictures and stuff to show everybody what those areas look like now and why they were abandoned and so on and so forth. So I'm thinking that's going to be a really cool series for all you guys to be able to see the before and after of these areas and learn all about the Queen Mary's little, like, little places inside the ship that are now abandoned. So I think that would be really cool. And then I want to see, I haven't told Steve yet, but maybe we'll even expand out to talking about the QE, uh, the QE, Queen Elizabeth, as well. Even though the Queen Elizabeth no longer exists, we could expand out by showing some similar places that the Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth have in common. Like, let's just say the First Class Library. We can show the difference between Queen Mary's First Class Library and the Queen Elizabeth's First Class Library. So maybe we'll expand to doing that, too. But, um, but yeah, it's going to be a really cool live stream. The first one is on the 16th. The next one is, I forget what the date is after that, but it'll be about a twice monthly live stream. It'll be really cool. So anyway, um, I'm going to end this live stream right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep an eye out for new videos being posted all the time. I have videos posting every single week. Um, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.